Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. As you see today, we have some laundry job. And you know, when you do business with the laundry, a lot of things will go in the laundry. I mean, will appear there. There's things you don't see about people until they put their laundry up. Panties, underwears, clothes nobody should see, laundry. So, but nothing wrong with the laundry. I mean, we human, we get dirty, and then what we do? We clean our clothing, the same as we take shower. Why? Because we get dirty. But the topic really today is not about clothing. It's about different kind of laundry. As an example, if we ask anyone, any Muslim, I don't know if how many Muslims we have in the chat here, any Muhammadan, uh, how Muhammad died? How Muhammad died? What what is the what do you think? What would come to your mind? A person like Muhammad who is supposedly a prophet, and what is the last thing this guy would do before he died? He is not only a prophet; he became a king, a big leader. What happened when he died? What is the last words he said in his death element? What is the last thing he asked to do? before he die many questions you know and all of them they will lead you to say well it must be something really great you know he died as a respected leader and he did what all big leaders do say some wise words uh, say final statement which nobody really say before he go and die the answer is very simple. Muhammad did not do any of that. The last request Muhammad he asked for before he died is to pee. To pee. You see, usually people who have a gift, they feel their death is coming. Especially we are talking about somebody supposedly he's a prophet of God. So when a prophet of God want to die, I mean, he would say something special. He knew what's going to happen. You know, the Muslims, they say that Jesus himself was a prophet. Uh, Jesus, <clears throat> as we know, we die, he died in the cross. And in the last moment of his life in this earth, as before crucifixion, because there's life before and after crucifixion, he said it's complete or completed, which means his mission, enter the cross. The last thing Muhammad he did is the following. Ah, she said that they say that the Prophet made a will for Ali, but he called for passing in which he urinated. Then he went to Flaccid suddenly and he died. Different hadith. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Anyway, one is enough. Doesn't matter really how many of them. But the last thing Muhammad he did, he did piss. Here we see the laundry of Islam because those stories they tell us a lot about Muhammad and what happened to him. A person who is a prophet of God. He would do something very special. He would not ask for, why you want to urinate in the last moment in your life? Obviously, he did not know anything. His God did not tell him that he is going to die very soon. So don't waste your time and urinate now. Take your urine with you. Uh, let us see a different thing. If I take this word, dust, and I put the word dust here, just mean like a big dish, wide open dish. Usually, like you can use it for uh, doing laundry or even cooking. One of the wives of Allah, Apostle, joined in a tikaf, and she joined. She noticed a blood and yellowish discharge from her private part, and then she put under her a dish 
and she prayed. What is this? Why we are even reading this? That is the laundry. A woman, her name is Aisha. Let us say, let us assume that Aisha today is alive. How many millions will be subscribing to her account in Twitter or Facebook? And then now Aisha, she appears every morning or night and she sends some news to the followers, the fan, the worshippers. And then she say, well, you know what, when we do, uh, you know, etc., and we notice some drop of blood coming from our, uh -huh, you know, I mean, like here they are saying private part, private part. Okay, and what is coming from there? Yellowish discharge. If you are a person who study medicine, I mean, if you're a doctor, you will know that this is about infection. Obviously, somebody is infected with some diseases. It might be sexual disease. Because why she have yellowish discharge? You can go and search some, do some search in Google. So here, this is the laundry of Muhammad is published, and the laundry doesn't make any good for Muhammad. The first question I will ask myself when I read this, what kind of a woman this woman is to go out and tell what about coming, what is coming from her private part? I mean, what is the business of any of us? Why people need to know? The quality of the person is the quality of his wisdom, his talk. This is the wisdom of Islam. So now the prophet, the prophet here, he hear his wife saying this. He didn't. He don't get upset. The one they call him the prophet. You see, I'm calling him the prophet. It's for comedy. Where is decency? Where, where in the Muslim, the Muslim they say women Islam is. Uh, uh, they are different from other. They they are shy. Where are, do you see any shyness in talking about what coming from your private part? And you will see the stories tons of time repeated. The prophet is sucking my tongues. The prophet is sucking my lips. The prophet sleeping over my foot, over my thigh. The prophet who ordered me to put a sheet around me so he can fondle me. What is this is about? When Muhammad die, or before he die, you will see Muhammad he cannot even carry his body. As you see here the story, I ask Aisha, the mother of the believer, supposedly she is, tell me about the sickness of Allah Messenger. She said, he felt pain and started to spit over his body. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, if you remember, in the Bible is speaking about Jesus, he spat, and he put his spat on, with, mix it with the, with the dirt, and he put it in the eye of the blind man and he made him see. Muhammad, not only he cannot heal anyone, he have no miracles, he's spit all over his body. Now, do you see it? It's not me who is saying that. The spitting of Muhammad is all over his body. Question. The Muslims, they say, well, you know, Jesus, if he is son of God, there is no way that God, the Father, will let his son to be humiliated. Okay. But that means Islam should accept that Jesus is God, for Jesus was not humiliated in the cross, according to Islam. He was saved. Here you see the double standard of the logic. Secondly, when somebody spit on you, is humiliation. What about you spit on yourself? What does that mean? Where is the God of Muhammad? Somebody when I insult me, he spit on me. Okay, I have no control over other people's behavior. However, they will be punished for their behavior sooner or later. You can do whatever you want. You can even spit at God. But when a person, he is a prophet of God, and he is so sick, to the point he cannot even control his saliva. And his saliva is all over the place and he spit on his body. And then you will find that even his spit is weird. 
and we began to compare his spittle to the spittle of a person eating raisins. It's like a jelly. It's like disgusting. Something. It's not just a spit. It is something disgusting coming from his mouth. What is that? Why the Honorable Prophet, as Muslim they call him, and he is the most important person for Allah, as the Muslim they claim, how come he reached a point that he is spitting all over himself and his spit is very ugly and disgusting? No answer. And here actually, you will see even they are describing for you how disgusting his spitting. Look at this. Like a person eating raisins and spitting out the seeds. I mean, how bad that was. What was this that? This guy was not spitting liquid. He was spitting something else. You know what I mean? And this is confirmed that Muhammad, he died by poison. As we see in the other hadith, where Aisha, she said that Muhammad, he was suffering from poison and he died by poison. As we see here in this hadith. The saliva of a person, uh, many of you watch movies, you see when somebody, he is dying from poison, you will see like a foam coming from his mouth, right? It's like a foam. There's, this is not just, it's not a water, no more. It is, it's, it is something mixed. It is something have wrong look. So this is how Muhammad he died. But this is very horrible thing. Why? Because you know the, the story when when Muhammad supposedly was poisoned, the women she said to uh, he he asked her why why you did poison for me. I mean the guy he killed her family, her tribe, he raped them, and you are wondering why you want to kill him. He said to her that Allah will not let you uh, will not let you do it. Let me see if I can find the hadith. So we can understand more. And for us, the important of those things, uh, that now we knew from those hadith a lot of things which is exposing Muhammad to us. Let us see here. I'm trying just to find the reference. Uh, give me a second. Anyway, I will try to, to post it later, show it later. But anyway, that Muhammad, he said to the women, uh, actually, you can watch a videos of our sheikh, his name Yasser uh, Habib. He explained uh, uh, about this hadith, about the Muhammad, he said to her, that Allah will not let you accomplish your mission, which means killing me by poison. But as you see, he died by poison. And the form is coming from his mouth, is confirming how he died. Now, the Shia, they accuse Muhammad, uh, sorry, Aisha, that she is the one who caused the death of Muhammad, they're claiming that it's no way that a poison you ate way long before is the 
same poison killed Muhammad. They agree it's a poison. He died by poison. But they believe the one he, who killed Muhammad really, it was Aisha and Hafsa. So their parents can take over Muhammad, uh, 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 you know, leadership. Because it became a huge business. But those laundry, they are priceless. Because when Muhammad, he say, I feel as if my orta is being cut off from the poison I ate at Khaybar. And he mentioned by him <laughs> himself that the, the po which poison is killing him. You see, this is the weakness of the Shia argument against Aisha. Because they say that Aisha is the one who killed him. But as you see here, Muhammad saying that the one he killed him is the poison which he ate at Khaybar. However, here, the story have a weakness too. Why? Because the one who reported the story is Aisha herself, and she is the one who accused by the murder. So it's possibly that Aisha said or added the word Khaybar. However, the Muslim consider this book as a Sahih, and we are talking about the Muslim Sunni, the one who do breastfeeding for adult. Uh, the Shia and the Sunni, now there is major differences between them. The Shia, they practice muta, which is not a practice uh, 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 by the Sunni. They practice, but they have different names, like they have Zawaja friend, uh, friend marriage, which means you marry a woman, you put her in the hotel, or you want to have sex only, but she don't go and live with you in the home, at home. Uh, they have like a student marriage, like you want to go study overseas, you find a girl, you lie to her, you marry her for a month or two, because supposedly this is marriage, this is not prostitution, you know? And when you are leaving in the airport, you send a text message, you say to her, bye-bye, I'm done with you, I was a student. So they have many kind of those marriages, temporary marriage, for just fun. Which means they have muta, and the women, she get payment for it. However, the Shia and the Sunni, both of them, they agree that Muhammad was killed. The Sunni agree that Muhammad's statement here is accurate. Actually, uh, I saw an idiot, he is from uh, Malaysia, uh, he says that the word Orta, I saw the, the video actually of uh, David Wood. Uh, I like it when Muslims, they try to make a statement, uh, and the funny, those who speak Arabic don't dare to call us, and uh, if, if, if they try to defend, they get themselves busted. There is a, there is an, uh, uh, there's a page which is dictionary, English uh, Arabic dictionary, owned by Muslims, run by Muslims. It's called Al Ma'ani. Let me see if I can open it. Here we go. This is Al Ma'ani website. So here you can post any word you want. You can copy it, and you can find out what is really the meaning of the word. So as an example here, the word uh, uh, about the poison. Here it says orta, right? Okay, I can copy the word here. This is the word in Arabic, Abhari. And then it should be Abhar because this is the origin of the word. And then post it in the dictionary. And we will see if it's mean Orta or mean something else. They say the word in the Quran is used as a different word. It's the same. Abhar is artery orta which the blood carry from the left side of the heart you see it if we go to the quran we will find the same different word but it's the same meaning let us go to the quran al-quran use al-watin Chapter 68, verse number 46, 69, sorry, verse number 46. You can do the same. You copy the word here. You take it to the dictionary, the same dictionary, the same page. We will not change anything. And we pause the same word. Remember what the word here, Abhar, this is the word in the Hadith. And this is the translation, Orta, main artery, through which blood carry from the left side of the heart. Okay. We will post now the word from the Quran, Watin. As it is. 
look at the translation do you see it the same exactly the same thing so there's desperately a bunch of idiot kids like this guy he, he, he's big like an elephant but he is uh, have a brain uh, like an ant uh, both of them they have the same meaning it's a different word but the same same part of the of the body so this laundry here exposed something for us very important that this verse in the hadith is saying that if muhammad was lying this is why this is important it says here tanzilu min rabbil alamin walaw taqawwala alayna ba'd al منه باليمين ثم لقطعنا منه الوتين. What does that mean? Translation of the Muhammadan, which is funny. This message sent down from the Lord of the world. And if the messenger were to invent any of a saying in our name, we should certainly size him from his right hand, and we should certainly then cut off his artery. Do you see it? So even the Muslim translation in their own translation, it says the word artery. So this laundry exposed for us many things about Muhammad. Muhammad, before he died, he wanted peace. Muhammad have dead dogs under his bed and he don't notice, which is telling me how stinky he is. I mean, if a rat die in the house, all your house will be stinky. So how about a dog? He's dead. And then the dog under the bed, and this is why the angels cannot get inside the house, which is very funny and stupid. And then we find that Muhammad died by poison, and he himself describing that he, his altar is being cut off. But isn't it him who delivered for us a verse in the Quran saying that Allah, his God, told him that if Muhammad is lying, telling the people supposedly, if Muhammad is lying, I'm going to cut his artery. And then we find that his artery is being cut off. Now, here you might find some Muslims getting so smart. And I like it when Muslims, they get smart, by the way, because it's a comedy. And this is what they will tell you. They will tell you, well, the prophet, he says, I feel as if my orta is being cut off from the poison. Actually, it doesn't say I feel as. This is a translation in Arabic, it says, in this moment, my orta is being cut off from that poison. And I changed the Muslim to say, I'm lying. Especially those who they say, I don't know Arabic, which is very funny. So, secondly, why Muhammad is mentioning the orta if it's not the orta? Number three, remember that Muhammad, he doesn't speak something that's true. So if what happened to Muhammad not true, I mean, if he's saying this and it's not true what he's saying, that's when he's lying. Or he is not what the Muslim claim, that he's always, his statement is preserved coming from God. It's a statement of truth and uh, no, no, no mistake. There's no way that Muhammad was mistaken. If a Muslim he accept here that he was mistaken about what happened to him, that means Muhammad can be mistaken about everything. Now I noticed because this time is not the usual time for us, not many people here. Please invite your friends and tell them that we are live on air. Um, I will try to make different timings so people from different uh, territory, they can join us and they can be part of our broadcast. So we do uh, morning in my time and we will try to do evening too, so more people can join. Uh, can you give us the link? The link is always very easy to obtain, my friend. Always do this. As an example, you want to find this hadith. Let us say this video been taken and posted by some one of you. Anyone watching the video, pause the video and search for the same. Like in his element in which he died, type that in the search engine of sunnah.com, you will find the hadith. Very simple. All right? All right? Hey, Ferus, how are you, my friend? Do you remember Fairuz? Fairuz, who used to call me, he's very upset from me. And actually, I was very upset from him too, because, you know, he became very annoying to me. I mean, I, 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 he, he was very stubborn, right? But I understand, you know, when you are a Muslim, and then suddenly he shock you, somebody shock you with the madness of Islam. So you get, you know, you, 
I mean, you have to defend. Your defense system go crazy, right? Because this is what you believe all your life, praying five times a day for the pagan God, Allah. Then you find that Muhammad is nothing but a fraud and he's a scam. So this is what happened to our friend here, Farouz, who became a Christian now. He used to call me almost every day. Uh, even he's like, he challenged me. Like, where it says that? Uh, it doesn't say that. You are lying. That's not true. Uh, you know? But, but here we go. Everything we say, it's in the screen. I never say it's something. Actually, as you see, always when I say something, I struggle to find it. It's not easy, by the way, to find reference in the moment because I don't prepare myself to go. Like, I made a title. And when, when the title come, whatever the conversation bring, I put the reference in the screen. So we always bring the reference and we don't lie about it. Most times they say the Christian prince is lying to you. But how come you don't call him the one who says Christian prince is lying? As long as it's so easy to get him busted. Why you don't call him and get him busted live on air? I mean, how come you, they are heroes to get me busted in their own videos? You see, in order to make you, let us say, they don't want people to listen to you. So they try to fabricate stories about you, make you lose a credit. A Christian prince, you don't know how to read Arabic. <laughs> Who is going to believe you? And, you know, for the sake of argument, 95% of Muslims do not know Arabic. So they are not Muslims no more. Your prophet himself, you do not know how to read his name. Here you see the double standard and the hypocrisy and the bankruptcy. They cannot refute me, so they try to make, make me lose a credit. As an example, they do video editing for my words. And they say, look, is that how a Christian, a Christian they talk? He said to a woman, suckle me. I was quoting the hadith from your prophet. So how come quoting your prophet is not good for a Christian? See, if you quote Jesus, nobody can accuse you of something. The second you quote Muhammad, they accuse you to be a sexual predator, as they claim. And the funny, they are following a sexual predator, but yet they try to give the title to somebody else. All of us, we knew that I speak to people in public. People, they call me in Skype, live on air, everybody here, nothing private. So, well, where, where this is coming from, it's just to make you lose a credit, so people will not listen to you. But that work in the opposite direction when people, they see the truth. And the truth will set you free. Uh, so, all this laundry, it might it might be for a certain time a good laundry, which means, you know, Muslims, they are subdued. Who they are even to question? Who they are even to say this is wrong? Who they are to say, look what happened here? Nobody. So it was a good laundry, but then after many centuries and especially now after the age of the internet, the smell of the laundry is all over. And ye, they cannot for, force us not to open the laundry box. All days is over. Right? Somebody saying, which English translation of the Quran is the best in your opinion? I think all of them, they are fraud. But you can uh, buy the translation of uh, Osama Dakdok. For sure, it's better than all the Muslim translation. Osama Dakdok is a Christian. Now, you might find some verses there. I don't agree with it, but uh, this is not very normal. I mean, people, they, they translate the band in their ability, and he do it according to his ability. So, but uh, generally speaking, I, I believe the translation of Osama is very good. Uh, yeah, because, you know, this smell of the laundry, nobody dare to say even there is smell. Like, like Yasser Qadi, he said, you remember Yasser Qadi in this video? He mentioned the story of the naked king. What is the, what about the naked emperor? The naked emperor, simply a, a little boy, innocent boy, he said the emperor is naked, the emperor is naked, but nobody dared to say the emperor is naked. So Muhammad is a naked man. His faith is all over the place. But because he is the emperor of a gang, he's a criminal. Who they are to say he is naked but now time is changing and now we have the internet imagine if I now live in Egypt or in Saudi Arabia what will happen to me after one video I make 30 seconds of my words what would happen to me I will be killed immediately all of us we knew that so they were able to 
uh, silence people for generations rarely you will find a real debate where the Christian he is not going to be killed if he give an answer or refutation actually I remember a, a refutation made by Ibn Ishaq who is a Christian uh, uh, a, a Christian and he was working for the Caliphate you know the Caliphate don't trust Muslims especially about money or about safety they are secrets so this Caliphate he had a Christian man who he gave him a very important position and then this Christian man uh, a Muslim sheikh, big sheikh he sent him a letter asking him to convert to Islam the Christian man he answered him in a letter which is if you read it you will die laughing I mean this guy he humiliated Muhammad as if he don't live in Islamic State it looked like this guy he decided to I don't care they want to kill me let them kill me now when he did that letter they try actually to make the Caliphate nobody dare to touch him because he is the man of the Caliphate but they came to the Caliphate they asked him to kill him the Caliphate he cannot lose this man he is very wise very smart and he need him badly and they don't trust anyone so he said well if you did not send that letter to him you will not get that letter from him too <laughs> anyway I wish one day I can translate that debate because it's very interesting how he make fun of Muhammad and how he uh, uh, not only corner this big sheikh in the time of the caliphate he smashed him he smashed him and he's he actually even he called Muhammad sahibakum which mean your friend he don't call him a prophet about your friend the one you want me to believe in him <laughs> I mean look how he look how he's talking this guy is talking as as if he is living like in the in the, uh, in a safe secure place when those are a bunch of criminals they slaughter people for any reason and he's a Christian remember that uh, so this laundry is very important for us you know lately we heard people talking about the preservation of the Quran and how Yasser Qadi now the Muslims are very angry from him because he said clearly the Quran really is not really you know we cannot we cannot depend in saying the Quran is preserved uh, and he said the whole system have holes in it whatever uh, but preservation for of the Quran is for our benefit which mean I wish not even a single word from the Quran or the hadith is gone but sadly it's not the, the, the story as an example Omar al-Khattab he said the Quran was more than a million and twenty twenty five twenty seven thousand words which mean more than 80 percent of the Quran is gone so the bigger the Quran actually the better for us to love the more we will have comedy and the more we will see and know more about the filth of Muhammad the less pages we have in the Quran and in the hadith the less we know and the less will laugh about Muhammad as an example as we see here imagine if this how important if this hadith I mean if, it, if it's not there we will miss a lot you know what I mean so it's for benefit of us as a Christians that none of the Quran will be destroyed and none of the hadith will be destroyed however you need to notice that those who collected the hadith they themselves they agreed that a lot of stories about the Prophet is being deleted for it is not suitable to be mentioned or to be about the Prophet so what we have today is about all the filter and all the detergent they use in the laundry which means this is the clean laundry supposedly this is the clean laundry and look how dirty it is so after the filtration we have this so what about before the filtration? Right? Do we have any Muslim have anything to say? Any Muslim have a comment about the laundry of Muhammad? This is my challenge to the Muslims. Name for me one thing, one book. Uh, a story it doesn't fit under the category of laundry in your religion anything 
Any Muslim can tell us? Anyone? Just to show you how sure I am that Islam is nothing but a dirty laundry. What you can mention to me, something you are proud of. As an example, you know, when the Muslim, uh, they say to us, there is scientific miracles in the Quran. I find this is very nice laundry to expose. Right? This is very nice laundry to expose. Because if they did not make the claim of scientific uh, discovery in the Quran, we would not be laughing today at this laundry. So they fabricate, they lie, and then we get them busted, and then people, they will notice that Islam is not trustworthy. Because if Islam is a good religion, why the followers of Islam, they fabricate science in the Quran? Very simple question. Like now, who is a Muslim here? He want to give me something scientific in the Quran. Just to show you, there's thousands and thousands of articles and posts in the, in the, in the internet. We can destroy anything they say in two seconds, showing you that Islam is a fraud. For those who they claim that the, it's miracles or science, the fact it is the opposite, it's stupidity. Do we have any Muslim? <clears throat> Are you in the ocean Why there is a noise? Well, it's very hot. Okay, you want me to turn the fan off, huh? You want me to be burned like the lizard they burned Abraham? You know the story about Abraham, right? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, when when you hear Muhammad Tain's stories, you ask yourself, I mean, those stories. I mean, how how uh, are we adult? Are we kids? Are we, are we, you know, are we idiots? How in the world can we can believe in such a thing? That the lizard was trying to burn Abraham. And all the animals they brought, they tried to put the fire down, except Mr. Lizard. How we can believe in this? When the fire was made to burn Abraham, if a bird he fly from high place, he would be burned, became barbecue light away in a chick as a chicken. Hmm? And then the red lizard, you know is the one who was behind all this flame. Like if you know, if you remember, if you go in the Quran, where it says, uh, you know, if we go in the Quran, we'll find the story here. In chapter 21, verse number 69. You know? So, who in the world is going to believe in this? And uh, uh, in the Quran, you will find uh, something very funny about the Quran. As an example, if you read the verses, Abraham, he says to them, do you worship someone beside Allah? And then, shouldn't you worship someone only like Allah? And then, suddenly, and when they burn him, okay, uh, they told him, let your God protect you. And then he said, Allah said to him, okay, be fire, be cool on him. Okay, and then suddenly, well, the story changed. What, what happened? Who are they, those people? What happened? Where? When? No, nothing. You know? Where? Where, where does the story happen? What location? Which city? Which town? You read the whole chapter, you find nothing. It's just a stupid thing. And you will find there is no connection between the beginning of the chapters and then the verses after. Suddenly, Abraham appear in the story, and suddenly, uh, Abraham will be burned. Burned. And then Muhammad, he, he come with the, uh, with the story about the lizard who want to kill the prophet.
And this is why Muhammad, he said, the one who kill a lizard, if you kill him from the first hit, Allah will give you extra versions. He will give you extra reward. You know the, re the version, the reward of Allah. It's about six, private part, women. Right? So, uh, if, if we go in the hadith, let us see if we can find it. Um, let me find the reference. Give me a second. Let us search for this. Here we go. Allah Apostle order that the salamander should be killed and said, i.e. the salamander blow fire on Abraham. <laughs> this is laundry. This is a priceless laundry. If we go just to search for pictures here, let us search for the what is called salamander. What is salamander? Because some don't maybe know what it is, uh, salamander. Salamander is a little tiny lizard, you know. You can hold it in your hand. It's very tiny. For sure, like this is like, uh, this is not the same one in the, uh, uh, in the desert. It's different color usually. It's, you know, it's not a big deal. It's a small, tiny animal. Eat uh, insect. You can find it in the in the wall of your house if you live if you live in a warm area like Indonesia. So how this how this salamander did try to burn Abraham? You know what I mean? You know, forget about Christian and Jews and Hindus and etc. Okay, let us say you are just a human being trying to find, uh, you know, study something, and then I come to you and say, hey. Do you know that yesterday a salamander, who is in the size of my finger, he tried to burn me? Now, are you going to believe in what I say? This is Mr. Salamander in my window. All right? So, this is why we say that the laundry of Muhammad is extremely important. This is all his laundry. This is his poopoo. -poo. This guy, the more he talk, he don't talk, he do poopoo. -poo. All right. So now a person he wanna come to me and say Islam is full of uh, uh, wisdom, uh, science. Okay, okay. Let us go with science. No problem. Okay. Let us talk about Mister Salamander. What is this? And not only that, Muhammad he mentioned that if you kill Mister Salamander, he's wanted. By the way. All right. Uh, if you kill him from the first hit, you have a special reward. Let us see if we can find. A look at this hadith here, just to show you this hadith. A woman entered upon Aisha, and her hand was an iron footed stick. She said, What is this? Which means she said to Aisha. Aisha, she said, It is for those guy go. <laughs> because the Prophet of Allah told us that there is, was nothing that did not try to extinguish the fire of uh, uh, of an, an Abraham except for this animal. Look how disgusting this animal is. And now Aisha, she is wearing, waging jihad against this animal who tried to burn Abraham. Hmm. Do we have any Muslim have any comment? Yeah, Geigo, yeah, Geigo, Mr. Geigo. Geigo is dangerous, you know, we have to admit. I mean, do you see what he do? Me. And actually, he looked like a dragon, by the way. I mean, look at him. Obviously, he did something to Abraham. 
And look at this guy. I was look at this guy. Obviously, there's there's something fishy about him. I mean, we cannot really deny that this guy is involved with the trying to burn Abraham. I mean, look at him. He's looking at us. You feel? Look, you can't tell he's guilty. Can't you? I mean, can can you can you defend him? You cannot. Even if you bring the most, you know, like uh, powerful lawyers, they cannot get him out from this accusation. Obviously, he is dirty. Look here, he is he is climbing over the cable to cut the cable of the internet of Abraham. This is before the fire, so Abraham will not be able to use what's up and contact the fire department and tell him, "Hey, I have a fire. Come help me." So look at this unbelievable this desert. I mean, he was thinking about everything step by step. And it's a true story, you know. I mean, this is Muhammad. Muhammad saying so. I mean, come on. Obviously, you know, he planned this thing with his friends. They said together, like, okay, what if he called, like one of the lizards, he said to the other lizard, what if he called the police for us? Huh? The other lizard, he said, hello. And he put his tongue out, like, you know, hello. How we can call? You know, in the time of Abraham, there's no, uh, uh, there's no cell phone. There, there's internet, but there's no cell phone. Okay, yeah. So true story, brother. Uh, so uh, you know, brother, uh, we cut his cable. Hmm. This is laundry. This is the laundry of Muhammad. That's why we say it's priceless. We just two days ago we showed you the video of the sheikh who explained how if you go inside the bathroom. And you don't say a certain prayer, Shaitan he play with your bum. He go inside your anus and he block it. Laundry. This is priceless. Or the hadith, if you don't say a prayer, Shaitan he will round himself around the private part of the man and he will be doing the women. That's laundry. Priceless. Or Muhammad is speaking about that if a man have orgasm first, the baby will be uh, a boy. If the woman have orgasm first, the baby will be a girl. Or resemble the father or the mother you know this is all is laundry and it's a priceless laundry I'm so glad that this laundry is still still there dirty and by the way this is after cleaning after many cleaning actually Erdogan the filthy Erdogan he made a conference uh, I think two years ago Every two years, I think they have a conference trying to delete all the hadith, which is supposedly not as suitable to be about the prophet. They're trying to filter more, but it's too late. I mean, they are already there. First. It's impossible. Not not in the age of the internet. They maybe maybe they will be successful if they do that in from the time of Uthman or even maybe two hundred years after, three hundred years after, but not now. Now it's all over. Published everywhere. Uh, <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim here have anything to say? How the Prophet he knew this amazing stuff? How he knew that, you know, if a man have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy. That's amazing. So scientifically true. And by the way, if you don't know, most of Muslim women, they never have orga uh, orgasm. Actually, even the wife of Muhammad, she never had one. Look at this. The hadith here prove it. Um Muslim, she came to Muhammad, and here you notice what kind of society the society is. A woman, she knocked at your door and she said to you, Hey Prophet, yesterday I was masturbating, touching myself. I was dreaming about a man doing boom boom. I mean, what kind of society we are talking about? Look at this. Um Muslim asked the Messenger of Allah about a woman who sees in her dream something like which the man sees. What? 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 What is that exactly? Any Muslim will explain to us. So a woman, her name is a Muslim. She came to the Prophet and she told him that she saw a dream like men they see. And what happened after? There's a there's a water in her vagina. Read it. The messenger said, if she sees that she has this charge, so what we are talking about? What are we talking about? Orgasm. Masturbation. Let me, let's make it simple. Literally, masturbation. 
but I mean, why I need to ask Muhammad about masturbation? What is that? Okay, and what is the response to Muhammad? Of Muhammad, he said, if she sees that she has a, a discharge, then let her perform a bath. Okay, sound nice. Bath where? In the water of Bida. Which one? Anyone remember? You see, this is the laundry. This is the garbage. This is the laundry again. Muhammad he ordered the Muslims to wash themselves with water, have dead dogs, and women blood from period. So when you say the Prophet says, he said to her, wash yourself, take a bath, you ask yourself, wow, that's good. Take a bath, right? But then you will notice that the bath Muhammad he was referring to is taking water from dead dogs. That is, there's a little dirty water, like in the size of a jacuzzi, where the Arab of Quraysh, they throw their garbage and their dead dogs and women, they throw their rags from uh, their menstruation. So Muhammad, he take a shower there. This is, this is the laundry, see, this is literally the laundry. Now, if we go back there, about the previous hadith, so then let her perform path, Umm Salam said, and this is the wife of Muhammad, uh, oh, Messenger of Allah, <laughs> does it really happen? Well, what does that mean, does it really happen? She's asking, do the women have this charge? Do you see it? Okay, how a woman, she is married to Muhammad. She doesn't know that women, she have this charge. Any Muslim can tell us? Any Muslim? How the wife of Muhammad, she never heard of a woman she have orgasm. Who is a Muslim can tell us? Anyone? So when we say that Muhammad, he have a, a sexual problem, it's obvious. You see, whatever Muslim they say about Muhammad, obviously Muhammad, he cannot have sex. I think he cannot have sex. The women she's asking, do really such a thing happen? About what? About discharge. He said, yes, the water of the man is thick and white and the water of the woman is thin and yellow. Okay. So how come Ummu Salama, she never heard of the water of the women? She is a woman. She is the wife of Muhammad. Muhammad was doing what in the bedroom? Watching cartoon? Going life like Christian prince? He have no time for his wives? Uh, Anti-ignorance, my friend. If you live in the Middle East, you open the TV, praise be to Allah, praise to be the Muhammad. If you open the radio, it's the same. You go to school, nobody, you know, those things, nobody there to talk about. And actually, uh, uh, they try always to mute those things. I receive many emails from YouTube about the government of Pakistan, Saudi Arabia. They are complaining to YouTube about my videos. So this is how they, you know, and if somebody watch them and he decide how he can leave, they will kill him. I mean, look like you don't have an idea what we are talking about. This is a gang system. This is a mafia. You, you can't get in, you cannot get out. So in order to get out, you have, you need a revolution to change the system. Like what will happen sooner or later in, in Iran. I believe Iran, uh, when the regime, uh, the Islamic regime collapsed, Islam will collapse for, for centuries to come. Same as in Turkey. As soon as Erdogan collapsed, Turkey will go back to what it used to be. Actually, Turkey is the same as it used to be. I mean, night club, or go in Turkey. You know, the woman short there is not even a bikini. Even the bikini is shorter than the the big the short of a Turkish woman is a shorter than a bikini. I remember when I was uh, taking class, you know, uh, English class. Uh, there was, was two Turkish women. They come to our class. When the Turkish women they are there. We have like 40 guys in the in our classroom. If they are not there, our classroom is not even having 10. 
all the guys in the school they come to our classroom when those Turkish girls there because their short is not even even the teacher he don't look at them because it's shy to look the teacher is so shy he can't even look like the guy he don't know what to do he put his head everywhere trying to avoid looking at them because their clothes is it's not even going to the to the beach you know it's, I wish it was for the beach I mean it's like very embarrassing and then when they ask him a question, as you can tell, I mean, those, uh, but I'm not saying all, all Turkish women are the same, but I'm saying in Turkey, where is Islam? The, you know, Erdogan, he recited the Quran. Now he's trying to make Hagia Sophia uh, uh, a mosque. Uh, yeah, try, make it, you know, we will have it back. Don't worry. Sooner or later. So the appearance in the front, they fight for Islam, they defend Islam, they try to enforce Islam, but Islam is gone. Islam already is a history. All those who claim that they are defending Islam, as an example, Egypt. In Egypt, there's a lot of Muslims are crazy to defend Islam, but not even a single one of them, he practice Islam. To practice Islam, you have to stop TV, acting, music, practice Sharia Allah, cutting hands, stoning women. So where is that on you? Nothing. So they speak about Islam, but nobody want to practice Islam. No problem. You see, when they complain not to watch my videos, more people come and watch my videos. Like, you know, like now we have, because this is the wrong time for me, this is not the normal time, that's why I don't have too many, uh, about 670 people right now, not too many. But this video, you take it, you post it in an Indonesian channel, and after one day you will have 20,000 people saw it. So they try to fight me, it worked the opposite way. Well, today we are talking about the laundry of Muhammad, but as long as you mention no problem, we can talk a little bit about it. Another stupidity of Muhammad. You see, those are, Muhammad always is a thief. He takes stories from other people, but he add to it. He add, and mostly he, he takes stories from people who add many things to it. It's like, you know, gossip, you know, the gossip. So let us say, Today I have a fire in my house. I was using the matches and I burn a paper. I tell it to you. Then the guy, he go out and he says, uh, Christian Prince, he burned a box. But I told him I burned a paper. Then you take it and you take it to the other person. He says he burned his car. And then the other person, so Muhammad obviously, he carries stories from stories. And because he is a fraud, whatever story he hear, he put them in his, his books. So according to the according to Muhammad, there is a group of people they are called Gog and Magog, and in his time Muhammad he claimed that Gog and Magog they are going to be there soon. They are coming out. What this is about? If you remember in the Quran in the chapter of the cave, where the people of Gog and Magog they are, by the way we call them people, but they are not a human. Gog and Magog they are creatures. They are they have a funny look. Uh, their uh, like their right ear is so big they sleep inside it each one of them he can have six until he can have 1000 baby all right so uh, the the percentage of gog and magog to us as a human is one to 1000 so if we are seven billion right now that's me and gog and magog already seven trillion you know i'm, I'm not sure if i'm correct with the numbers it's one to 1000 so if we are every one billion, you have to make it 1,000 more. So Muhammad, he came with those stories, and those stories are very funny and stupid. And if you remember in the Quran, where uh, Zulqarnain, after he found where the sun set in a dirty water, which another pupu of Muhammad, uh, they told him that there is people who they are called Gog and Magog, and uh, they need a solution to stop them from killing them. Chapter 18, verse number 94. So they told him, can you build a dam for us between us and them? And then uh, Zulqarnain, the man with the two horn, uh, even the name is horrible. Uh, he built a dam between them. He said, bring me a block of iron. And, uh, you know, he filled the space between the two mountains. And that's it. Supposedly, those people, they cannot go through. And right now, every day, those 
Gog Magog, they are digging in the wall trying to get it through. All right? And then what happened? Each time they finish their job before the sun set, set in murky water, as the verse says, as you know, uh, they forget to say when they drink, inshallah. So when they leave Allah, He make the wall as it was before. So they cannot get in. <laughs> if you don't believe me, Muslims, you can read this story in the hadith. In the hadith, your prophet, he mentioned how Gog and Magog, they keep digging, keep digging. And the problem is, each time they dig, they forget to say before they start, inshallah, or at the end, inshallah, tomorrow they will come back. So, uh, their work will work, you know, will happen. Uh, if you remember when I spoke to Mimi, uh, uh, Mimi Susu Hijab, I asked him why you did not say inshallah. Many people thought like, what, what a big deal. Well, for Muslims, this is a big deal. As you see, you, you cannot be a Muslim you don't say inshallah. So according to Muhammad, uh, Gog and Magog, they keep digging every day to see if we can find the story. See here it says 1,000 from them, one of you. See, this is the, the ratio between, uh, uh, or the average, sorry, between the ratio between the, between them, the between the human and the Gog and Magog, 1,000 to 1 from us. Uh, let us see. <clears throat> let me take the screen off so I don't hurt your eyes when I'm looking. Um... I'm trying to find the hadith. <clears throat> Let us see here. Hilarious stories. Islam perfectly made by a fool for the fool. I like to find the hadith as long as we mention it <clears throat> because it's very funny and very stupid. Um, so simply the story that each time they, they dig, when they finish, before they come back in the second day, they forget to say, inshallah. And this is how Allah, he fixed it. He fixed that uh, hole they made. So when they come in the morning, they found it closed already as a penalty for them for not saying inshallah. Yeah. Actually, let me, I found this hadith. Let me show you this one for now. The messenger of Allah woke up red. His face is red. And this is another proof that Muhammad was a white man. And said, La ilaha illallah. O oh, we to the Arab, from an evil has drawn night. Today a hole has been opened in the barrier of Gog and Nago, and uh, he uh, gestured to indicate the size of the hole. So Muhammad is claiming that Gog and Nago already coming out in his time, this prophecy, saying, O oh, to the Arab, the Arab, the Arab, you see, the Muslims at that time is only the Arab. But this was 1400 years ago, and it's still until now nothing happened. All right. <clears throat> Let me just see. Yeah, I think now we will find it. I hate to mention something without giving reference. Because as you know, we show reference in the screen and yet the Muslims, they say he's lying. So what if about we don't show it? 
this is the reference. It's Sahih. This is from Jamia al Turmudi. Uh, it says here that, you know, in that day, those people of Gog and Magog, uh, they keep digging, 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 digging until they, uh, you know, the night come. And then their leader says, go back so you can penetrate in it tomorrow. Penetrate where? In the wall which is built by the man with the two horn, the prophet of Allah, uh, the one who found the sun set in the murky water. And... And then uh, he mentioned that if Allah wills, when he mentioned if Allah will, they will find the hole left as they left it. Which means all the time they were digging, digging, digging. Each time they dig, so they go back in the second day and they found that the hole is fixed. Allah, he fixed it. Why? Because they are not saying inshallah, if Allah wills. But when one day their leader, he remembered to say that word, and then when they come back, they will find the hole in the dam is not fixed, so they can go through. Now, who in the world will believe in such a garbage? It's just about saying, inshallah. You know what I mean? And then they will go and they will start attacking uh, the, the 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 Muslims and the Arab specifically, and not only that, they will attack Mecca, and then the Arab they will use the arrows of those Gog and Magog, and they make fire from it for seven years. Arrows. Is that enough to prove that Muhammad is a false prophet? Is it because you see a Muslim can say it's a missile, but it says they will make wood for fire from it for seven years. Arabic Christian use the word Allah. Very simple answer. They are they are Arabic Christian, right? They are under the control of the Muslims for fourteen hundred years. As simple as that. Before that time, nobody used that word. So they have a false translation in the Arabic using the word Allah. This is a this is a false translation. Every time the word Allah appear in Arabic Bible translation or Indonesian translation. That word either should be replaced by the word Lord or Yahweh if it says Yahweh. This is a false translation. Very simple. There is no need for explanation. I can make now translation and instead of saying Yahweh, I say Buddha. That doesn't make it right. Right? It's a translation. And those because they live under Islamic occupation and authority, uh, they use the word Allah to taqiyya, you know, which is which is hypocrisy. False. They should not do it. Uh, in Malaysia, as an example, the court, the Muslims, they were upset that the Christians are using the word Allah. And they are right. The Muslim there, they were upset that churches there, they are using the word Allah. And the Muslim, they said, but this is Allah is the name of our God. What do you have to do with it? And they are right. They are not right about stopping you from using it. I mean, none of your business. People should be free. But they are right that this is really the name of their God. Have nothing to do with you as a Christian. So they made a court order that a Christian are not allowed to use the word Allah in their Bible or in their churches. And I support that. But you might ask yourself, why the Muhammadan, they made this case? Simply, a lot of Muslims are leaving Islam. And they ask themselves why they are leaving Islam. Maybe because they are using the same word for the God. So that make it easier for a Muslim to accept Christianity for a Christian in Arabic, he say Allah, and a Muslim who is from Pakistan, he say Allah. So now if a Christian say to him, worship Allah, the Muslim, he will not find it strange for him to worship. Even though the Christian, he don't mean the God of Muhammad, he mean Jesus the Christ. Right? Uh... 
Allah is also used other other Christians as God. How is it? Where is that? What do you mean? What do you mean Allah is also used other Christians as God? I just told you, anyone who use it, those who use it is, is people who live under the Islamic authority. Even if you go abroad, you live all your life in the Middle East or Indonesia, you learn to call him Allah. So it became part of your culture. But this is wrong. Again, the one who is saying for, can we have the link, my friend, just type in Google the same title you see. Anything you see in the screen, you can type it, you will find the reference. All right? No, Muslim is not about confuse. It's about how we can stop Christians from converting Muslims out of Islam. This is the whole story. If I am a king in a Christian kingdom, I will make a law that anyone who use the word Allah, he is not considered to be Christian. Let us say announcement, not Allah. I will speak my opinion as a king. If you say that you worship Allah, you are either you mean the God of Muhammad or you don't mean him. The Christian will say, I don't mean Muhammad God, I mean Jesus. So, so why you say, why you use the word Allah? Jesus have a name. Use the correct name of Christ. Right? You know, if you grow up in a society and they are practicing something wrong, regardless if they are Christian or Muslims, why would not follow blindly, you know, what is wrong? Right? What about priests who help Muslims to write the Quran? This is not a priest. You see, what upon the Nofar is not really a priest. The Muslim, they say he's a priest. This is a guy who believe in a cult. You know, he joined the Nasara. Priest for who? We don't know. Where is the church? We don't know. We don't know. And what? So what if he's a priest or not? I mean, isn't it... Uh, there is there is people who they uh, there is people right now as we speak who they fight Christianity and they claim to be Christians. There is a priest who they are child molester like Muhammad, correct? A priest, it can be the devil himself coming as a priest. Jesus said, you know, be aware of false teachers who will come to you in the clothes of a, a sheep, but they are wolves. So, for us, we don't care who is a priest or is not. If somebody he is a pope or he is a bishop or or, or patriarch is from Protestant or Orthodox or Catholic. We don't care what church you go to. The Messiah said, that "From their fruit you shall know them." The second you support the filthy Muhammad, you are a person belong to the filthy Muhammad. Obviously, you are an antichrist. The Bible says it clearly. Who is the antichrist? Is the one who denies the Father and the Son. So when there is somebody, he's a priest. He say Muhammad is a good guy, and he worship the God of Abraham. Obviously, he is teaching script or manuscript which is not in the bible which is from other book and the bible curse those who bring other script other than this all right no we should not mention the word allah mean jesus at all you should not mention the word allah at all why you want to mention it don't mention it man Right? Yeah, there's a lot of people. They are fraud. You know, don't don't be misguided by titles like priest, priest, or rabbi. There are a lot of people doing business. If I if if right now a Christian friends, he instead of writing books, you see, I'm giving my books for free. Almost my my income from the books almost is zero because almost my books is is for free in. You know, uh, but if I write my books and my book saying Muhammad is a great prophet, can you imagine how much support I will get? How much Muslims they will support me? And Arab Christians exposing all the other Christians. Read his book. Uh, uh, Christian Prince made a book says that ten the most ten influenced people in the world. Number one is Muhammad. You know, then you will get all the devil support. 
when you are against the devil the support is little like right now I have a patreon right uh, maybe many of you do not know that maybe 90% of people in patreon they are just signing names they are not really donating there's very few people who support and help by donation but if I am a Muslim a Muhammadan and I give all this time which is all my time to fight against let us say instead of fighting against Christian uh, against Islam I fight against Christianity can you imagine how much support I will get the devil always support the evil one and the more you fight the devil the more you will suffer look at Sam Shamon Sam Shamon he don't even have a house poor guy this guy he don't deserve that all the work he did he don't get support David would I mean maybe now he is making doing better so you will see that those who fight the devil everything go around them if this guy now uh, Sam Shamoon he want to apply for a job who want to give him a job nobody people will be worried about having him in their company how he will make living who is going to support him so not only he have to worry about his safety his security his family and now even money he don't have in his pocket why because he is fighting the devil Muhammad and the same for the rest of us however at the end of the day we are victorious they can do as much as they can as much as they wish the truth will prevail they have the support of Saudi Arabia Qatar Emirat Bahrain money like like rain we are talking about billions when we got nothing literally we got nothing who is going to support us which is a Christian organization is supporting us nobody actually when we go to uh, when I go to a Christian church to do a seminar they have to make a presentation to explain why this guy is here because Christians sadly they don't like you to talk about Islam they say to you this is hatred what this is hatred you are dividing people actually I remember once in the Philippines I was meeting with the uh, with Senator Catayano and then after the meeting he is the, the foreign minister so I met with him and I asked him a question too like we have a meeting a private meeting and we have a question which is a public question after I finished I made a presentation with him there's a guy from Canada he's blonde blue eyes he said to me so what do you do exactly and he was speaking to me in a in like you know like as if he's disgusted so what do you mean is it like I know I saw you like you know you sound like you are supposed to be an expert in Islam and everybody was listening to you but I don't know like so what do you do exactly I said you just say that you know I uh, I teach about Islam he said so you are the one the kind of people who divide people I said why I'm dividing people look at this idiot because I'm quoting the Quran showing the senator explaining to him that the peace agreement with the Muslims in the Philippines should not accept any form of Sharia law and why they should not accept that according to this donkey who supposedly again see I was just talking about priest right he's a minister in a they call it Mennonite church something like that uh, and then after he left you know after I get him I, I smoked him literally uh, I searched his name in Facebook and I found his page this guy in his page I made a video about it if you remember this guy in his page he keep posting Prophet Muhammad a quotation of peace of Prophet Muhammad amazing wisdom of a Prophet Muhammad 
I mean, look at this filthy coward. He is a Christian, supposedly a minister, going to the Philippines as a missionary to teach Christianity. But look what he do. He is promoting Islam. Between who? Between the poor Christians who trusted him because he is the white man. Never, never listen to them. You see, we have a problem in Asia that if you are a white man, they think you are a big deal. I mean, for sure, you must be, you know what you are talking about if you are a white man. All people from Indonesia, I mean, I don't know about Indonesia, but Philippines, they knew what I'm talking about. They look at white man as something special. But this guy is an idiot. So what if he's a white man, white or black or Asian, doesn't matter. From their fruit, you shall know them, my friend, not from their color. So I made videos for him. I spanked him hardly. I tortured him. And the coward or what he do, he just delete my videos from his page. And then he's a church from having, he used to have like 70, 75. After all this work, his church get empty. So, you know, we have to be careful. Not everyone say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father. There's many people, they claim to be priests, they claim to be bishop, but they are fraud. They are fraud. Anyone who teach something against the teaching of the Bible is a fraud. And the Bible is so clear. Anyone deny the father, the son, he is antichrist. Muhammad, according to the Bible, is the liar and the antichrist. Now, there's the Antichrist and Antichrist. We can say Muhammad, at least, he's an Antichrist. So, if a priest, he come to you and say, Oh, no, Muhammad worship the same God. Obviously, he is not a priest of Christ. He is a priest of the devil, for the Bible is so clear. And there is something always you need to remember. When... The followers of Islam, they start praising a person who is a Christian. That means this Christian is not Christian. They will never praise you for being Christian. Remember, they make fun of us for following Jesus, right? Following Jesus, if you are a follower of Jesus, they have a duty to fight you, to humiliate you, to spit on you. So how come suddenly they are saying you are wonderful? Obviously, there is something wrong about you. Do we understand? If Muslims ever start saying, Christian Prince, you are wonderful, you should not listen to me anymore. Never. Because that will not happen unless I became extremely corrupt. Do you understand me? The second they praise anyone who is a Christian, it means he is no Christian. He is a fraud. The devil will not say good words about you unless you are a fraud. And the Bible says clearly, who is the one against God? Right? Otherwise, people, they give themselves titles. You know, I go in the Philippines or other country, they say, so what we call you, a minister, are, are you a priest? I said, no, I am no one. I am just Christian Christ. I said, no, we cannot call you. No, we have to call you. I mean, you are, you are, you are teaching us. You are. I said, I am no one, my friend. What teaching you? I am just a brother. I am no one. Why I want to seek titles? I am a Christian, and because I'm a Christian, I am a prince. For all of us, we are the children of God, the King of Kings. So, you seek titles, that means you are seeking your own glory. None of you even know me who I am. You don't know even how I look like. You have no idea. If you see me in the street, if you sit next to me in Starbucks, you will not know that this is me. 
for it's not me who is important the important is the truth Christian Prince come Christian Prince go he's no one what you need to take a side with is the truth not a person if a Christian Prince say the truth we take his side if he's not we don't who care who's he and that is the same for anyone who claims to be a priest. He take the side of God, he is the man of God. He don't, he is the devil himself. He's a fraud. What the Messiah said? You see, the Bible says there is only one master. For us as a Christian, there is only one master. It's not a bishop, it's not a pope, it's not a Christian prince. It is the Messiah, the Christ. That is the only one he can order us. No man can order us. And the order of Christ is so clear. He gave us all the tools we need to know and to find out. From their fruits you shall know them. Any fruits go against the fruits of Christ, the teaching of Christ, it is from the devil. There is no need even to argue about it, to debate about it. If Jesus teach love and you teach hate, you are no Christian. If teaches, teach, Jesus teach you know, uh, peace and you teach violence, you are no Christian. If you if you teach to love the Muslim and you hate the Muslim, you are no Christian too. So, but if you teach that Muhammad is a prophet, obviously you are no Christian at all, and you are taking the side with the Antichrist. If you search in the internet about uh, who is the Antichrist, you will find tons of websites. Showing you verses from the Bible. I just did the same here. And you will find that all of them, they fit fine, perfectly with Islam and the founder of Islam. Claiming that Jesus is no one is an insult to God. Insulting the Holy Spirit. Muhammad, he said, the Holy Spirit is Jibreel. That is, a sin will never be forgiven, according to the Bible. So, there is many, like here they are saying, the Antichrist. Remember, I'm, I am not saying Muhammad is the Antichrist. I'm saying Muhammad is Antichrist. Muhammad is too small to be the Antichrist. So he is an Antichrist by his teaching, for he teaches everything against the Christ. Christ is not divine. Christ is just a man. Even Muhammad the filthy, he went to sleep with the mother of the Messiah, which is showing us how much he is Antichrist. Additional to that, his act, his fruit, his evil, it's all over the place. Again, from their fruit, you shall know them. Do we have anyone have a question? Anyone have a question? So we were talking about the laundry, and obviously the laundry of Islam is very helpful for us. And I believe the laundry the most dirty laundry can be found in the Hadith and in the Quran, which I'm very grateful to have. How, how on earth can Allah say such a stupid thing? He cannot have a son. Yeah, well, you know, uh, you see, there, there is the, one of the good things about the Quran that it speaks in the logic of a fool. You know what I mean? So you should be grateful that the one who made the Quran is an idiot. Otherwise, that will make it harder on you to refute it. And this is why, actually, uh, um, yesterday I spoke to someone. He asked a special request. He's a Muslim. And he didn't want to talk in public. He's a very nice person. He's very, very, very respectful. I really I enjoy talking to him. And uh, he said to me, listen, I don't want to debate you. I just... Tell me why why Islam is not from God? Why Islam is from Shaitan? 
I said, I'm not saying Islam is like, like the Quran. I cannot say the Quran is made by Satan. He said, why? I said, because it's too stupid to be by Satan. I mean, there's no way that Satan is so stupid to the point he made the Quran. I believe that Satan is way smarter than this. Now, I told him that I believe that all lies come from Satan, yes. So Muhammad is sponsored by Satan, yes. But the Quran is so stupid. Like, look at this story here in front of us. Like, I did not mention this in the story for him, but I mean, I mentioned many stories. I mean, look at the story that he found the sun set in murky water, Gog and Magog, you know, uh, the angels, uh, the open school of Harry Potter to teach magic. I mean, so this is Shaitan talking. To, there's no way Shaitan he made this book. This is a certified donkey who made the book. There's no way Satan, he can be so stupid like this. You know what I mean? The guy, he started laughing. He said, I don't believe you are saying, I mean, he says, I, you know what? I hate you, but you make me laugh. He said, okay, you, um, I appreciate your honesty that you hate me. He said, no, no, I don't really, I don't mean I hate you. I mean, I hate the way you hit men, you, you hit hard. You know, you are not so nice. I mean, did you, did you even know what you just said to me? I said, I'm just saying the truth. There's no way this book is from Satan. It's so stupid. Satan is smarter. But I believe Muhammad is satanic, is evil. So he belonged to the tree of Satan. But this book is not made by Satan. There's no way Satan will say the sun set in murky water. I'm sure that Satan, he knew where the sun set. There's no way Satan, he would say, uh, the women have a sperm coming from her ribs. There's no way Satan would say all the stupid things, like lizard tried to kill everyone. Right? This is not, I mean, this is, this is someone stupid idiot speaking to a bunch of naive people, fabricating stories, adding spice to the stories, to make stories. A person who cannot keep his mouth shut and he's bored. That is not Satan. So he said, so how come you always say uh, Muhammad is from the devil? He said, yeah, because any evil is from the devil. The devil, he come to us in many forms. He come to, come to me as a Christian priest, have a cross in his chest. He said, really? He said, yeah. The devil is powerful, he's smart. He come to you from the door you like. If you are a person who like prostitution, he come to you from prostitution. You like gambling, he come to you from gambling. You like money, he come to you from money. What do you like? You are religious, he come to you from religion. This is why the Lord, the Messiah said, be aware of false teacher who come to you in the clothes of a sheep, but they are wolves. So what those false teachers do, they just to change the uniform to fit with the customer. Right? And then he said to me, well, isn't it the Quran says, like as we see here in the front of us on the screen, like if you do righteous, how Quran, how Quran is from the devil, and it says do righteous. I said, I said, okay, do you know what righteous? It, righteous is to go and attack the Christian and the Jews and take their money and their women. Righteous is you go to your son, wife, and you flirt with her. Was Muhammad a righteous man? He said, yes, he was. I said, okay, did he go to his own son when the husband was not there and he flirted with the wife? He said, yes, he did. He said, well, this is righteous. <laughs> if Muhammad is the most righteous man between all of you Muslims, and he went to the house of his own son, and he flirted with the wife, and later he slept with her. Where is the righteous man? Allah split the moon. As I know, the moon is still there, and it's not split. Actually, if I look my, from my window, I will see it. This is another stupid story. It's, you see, like if you go to the chapter of... Uh, this is why I say that uh, the Quran cannot be made by the devil, for it's so stupid. But it's a devilish book. It's uh, full of lies. But if you go as an example to the chapter of Al-Qamar, you know, uh, where he's speaking that the moon is split. I mean, this verse alone, this chapter alone, is a stupid to the point exposing Muhammad right away. Why? Because if you are saying to me judgment day is near and the moon is split, that means judgment day started. And all what happened is just eclipse. And Muhammad claiming that this is the moon splitting. There's no way the Satan he will say such a statement. 
And by the way, Muhammad reminded me of Jehovah's Witnesses, who every few years they make a new date for the Judgment Day. A second, uh, a meteor come to the earth, they say, Judgment Day is here. Uh, a second, a storm will come, Judgment Day is here. Hurricane come, Judgment Day is there, you know. And actually, for me personally, I don't like even Christians who try to use the word Judgment Day to claim that Judgment Day is coming because of uh, storms or disaster happen. Like now, we have Corona. You see some Christians, they say, oh, Judgment Day is coming. The Bible speak about, uh, you know, diseases, blah, etc. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. See, the Bible is a book. If you remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, if there was only 50 or even 10 people who they are decent, God will not punish this whole city. Only, imagine. If only, he said to him, what if I, if I have 50, I will not punish it. But if I have 10, I will not punish it. 10 people only decent. So, judgment day will come when the whole world is totally corrupt. Which means, the one who is not corrupt is so tiny in number. And this is not the case until now. Until now, you go in the street. Like, if I go in my street where I live, I have a lot of nice people around me. Very beautiful people. Neighbor who care for what I am. Where are you? Would not see you. Neighbor cut my grass. Neighbor bring me flowers to plant in my yard. Neighbor bring me tomato he have in his yard. I mean, a lot of beautiful people around you. So we are far from that day. People who they are here supporting me. People who is making donation. People who is translating my videos. So, you see, to speak about Judgment Day, we want to come to the point if somebody speak about Jesus, nobody want to hear his voice. He will be like a lonely person in the desert. You know what I mean? So, some, same as Islam, same as some, some they claim to be Christian, they try to scare you about Judgment Day, so you give donation, like call now, give us this our phone number, make donation now before it's too late. What too late? What does that mean? You, do, you can bribe God, so you give donation, that said you are saved? That is a scam, right? You know what I mean? If you give donation to Christian Prince, you will not go to heaven. Well, this is not what will take you to heaven. Jesus said from their fruit you will know them, but you cannot bribe God. So what, you give the nation, you go to heaven, that's it? No, there's many things you need to do in your life. So those people who try to scare you about judgment, they trying to make you make donation, etc. Oh, donate now because it's going to be too late, blah, 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 blah. Go our number right now. And this is going to happen between Muslims, Christians, all religion. This is a fraud. This is what? This is a fraud. Donating to me will not take you to heaven, my friend. Never. That is the reason to donate to me. Donate to me is you supporting me for what I do. To help you and help other people and help children to know the truth. It's like having a teacher and you hire this teacher. But it's not the teacher who will save you. It's not the teacher who will take you to heaven. It is the Messiah. But we do the right investment and we do wrong investment. So either we spend our money in something foolish and stupid or we spend our money in good investment so we can make the world better. Uh, <clears throat> you want to hire me forever? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> As long I am, I am not for hire by men. I am hire for hire by the Lord. All right. No man can hire me, my friend. With my respect to you, I know you like you like to support me. I understand what you are saying. You close the blind. That's better. I am not for hire by any man. I am for hire by the Lord. So, and you know, but and again. You know, when we speak about God, the good God, doesn't mean we are good. I mean, who are we to speak about being good? 
We are sinners. We are human. We have sin. We get tempted. We have desire. We have wishes. We have dreams. You know, sometimes you dream about having money. I mean, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, here we go. Like, I'm, I'm sweating here. I mean, why I don't have air conditioning like everybody, uh, you know, to have a cool house, etc. Thank God I have a roof. I'm, I'm so happy to have what I have. You know, I can't complain. So you can be tempted and you can be complaining and you can be unsatisfied always, no matter what you have, even if you have a palace. A wise man and a wise woman, they should appreciate what they have for what they have is priceless. Some people don't see it, don't notice it. I have a, I have a cup of water, I have little water in it. I really appreciate it. My voice is gone. My throat is dry. So imagine if this is little water is the last water in the world. Can you imagine what is the price of this water for me? Priceless. It's just a little water. So here you learn how you appreciate things, which is really, usually, we don't appreciate. Because without little water, you die. Your voice will not come. Your eyes will not function. You will become like a tree, losing, losing its leaves. So, we don't appreciate things around us. And this is number one problem for us. Muslims, they claim they appreciate, but the fact they don't. Muslims, they have an idea that we being victorious is about forcing people to be subdued to our belief. But this idea will not make you victorious, will make you hypocrite. And this is exactly what happened to Islam. You see, Muhammad, he said in the Quran, that when victory came, people, they enter into Islam by waves. When, when victory came, what victory? War victory. Okay, Muhammad, why people did not enter Islam before that war victory? By waves. As we see in chapter 110, verse number 1 and 2. Uh, this site okay when come the help of Allah the fast translation is about victory huh? and the occupation the occupation of Muslims and then we see that people enter into Allah religion by crowd tens of thousands in one day why people want to live you know what I mean People want to live. That is not a victory. That is a religion of hypocrisy. Actually, this is the this is the reason Islam is gone. Islam is stupid. You see, he, they force people into Islam, but there's no Muslims no more. Because now we don't know who is a Muslim who's not. You know what I mean? What do you think of someone can speak spirit language? I cannot really comment about that. I believe that God is powerful. God, you mean maybe you are talking about speaking languages, right? Or speaking in tongues. I believe God can do miracles, and this is a miracle happened before, so it can happen later. But I cannot you know, testify for people I do not know. Maybe it's true, maybe they are lying. You know? But can God do that? Absolutely. Can the Lord make us do that? For sure. Can the Lord, he give me a power to make a blind see? Yes, he can. But there is many, they are false. And there is many, they are truthful. There is many, they, are, they make false miracles so they can collect money from people. You know, he like, a, he take his business like a magician, you know, just to do false. They hire false people to claim that they are sick and then he heal them or they sh shock them or whatever, like, you know, this garbage, uh, like Muhammad. Muhammad, he claimed many things. And who dare to say you're a liar? But can really miracles happen? Absolutely. How can I help someone who already prior with me to Jesus yet is a Muslim and a friend difficult to make move because of what? A feeling. I'm not sure what do you mean 
max max you see you you do your best to help somebody to accept the messiah but the best one to help someone to accept the messiah is the messiah tell the person to listen to the words of christ especially if he can play audio if there's like an uh, audio bible let him listen to it listen to the wisdom the beauty the amazing teaching otherwise nobody really can help uh, i mean like today one of you he sent me a video um, about collection of people who let islam uh, talking to me you know i help people yes I show them truth, I convince them by evidence, but accepting the Messiah, it is the Messiah and you. I do my part as a person who have knowledge, show you reference, uh, explain to you, but the acceptance or rejection is your business. Danuk, my friend, may the Lord, you know, take care of you. I hope my prayer is accepted. Uh, do we have anyone have a question? See, today we don't have too many because this is not the time. Usually I go live. Usually I go all morning in my time. But it doesn't matter really. So we can get people from other places. Uh, okay. Any question? Uh, uh, Muhammad beating Aisha. You know, you see. Uh, the the Muslims I saw the Muslims saying that he just uh, like uh, push her, but the Hadith says she he hurt her, and even different Hadith speaking about about Abu Bakr too, you know, involving in beating. Uh, but who care about Muhammad beating or not? Who dare even to say Muhammad was a bad person? We knew that. Remember, we are reading their books, which is written by them books written by them speaking about Muhammad so whatever will be written there supposedly is going to be witnessing that Muhammad is a good guy right okay I want you to focus always in better issues you know I understand Christians they want to prove a point so okay Islam teach to beat women no problem uh, It's better for you to focus in women in general, not only in Aisha, because they can give you all the excuses. So if you want to prove to women that they're women, uh, they as women, they don't have equal rights, then that is a better choice because they can make it an individual story and they can even deny the story saying, oh, this is hadith, they can make it daif, they can make it rejected, they can make it as they wish. But if we go in the Quran, we will find that the Quran says clearly, beat your wives. The Muslim, they add like first and second, etc. Change the translation, you will see this, those things disappear. So I advise Christians always not to waste your time about those things. Focus in general rules, which make Islam look as it is. It's better for me to focus my time showing that women, they will be beaten by men. And that alone, doesn't matter how light the beating is, which is not really light. We have the hadith proving that the man he did beat his wife into her skin became a greener than her clothes. So it's better for you to focus in women beating, not Aisha was beaten by Muhammad. Always focus on the head of the snake. You can add that example to this example to support more proofs, but don't mention it by itself. You know what I mean? Like, if a Muslim says to you, no, no, the Prophet did not beat his wives. Okay, so the Quran says, if your wives disobey you, beat them. Muhammad, don't do that. Does that mean you disobey the Quran? <laughs> you know what I mean? 
So you have to deal with their logic. Their logic is silly. So are you saying that the one, if, if a Muslim, he says to you, no, 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 Muhammad did not beat his wife. Okay, are you saying that beating wife is wrong? If you say yes, okay, thank you. That's mean Islam is wrong. You know what I mean? And actually it happened once, you know, like I have thousands and thousands of, I don't know, tens of thousands, what thousand of Muslims who try to debate me. And they use all kinds of tactic. And wherever they go, the coffin is ready. All sizes. And they are self-adhesive. So you make them close the coffin in themselves. This is what happened when they debate me. So once I was debating Muslim, he was like so excited. He says, no, oh, Islam, don't, uh, so, so it's okay. Okay, so your prophet, he is a very good guy. He will never, you said to me, he will never do that, beat his wife. So are you saying beating wife is wrong? I said, absolutely. I said, are you saying it's evil? I said, for sure. This is not civil. This is ugly, disgusting. I said, are you saying that a man who beat his wife is a coward? I said, sure, I agree with you. Look like we have many things we agree about. I said, okay, great. But the Quran, your God, Allah said, like after I made him say all those statements, you know, I did not cut it. So I made him say all the statement to confirm that this is evil. Now he cannot take it back. I said, okay, well, the Quran says beat your wife. And now how he can get out. That's it. It's a quick sand. His feet all the way down in the sand. He cannot move. So when you are speaking to Muslims, you are not debating them. They don't debate. They play games. You know what I mean? Can a Muslim become a Baptist and not receive the Holy Spirit? I don't know. Became, how, what do you mean he become a Baptist? You mean he baptized? If he is a believer, he baptized, you will receive the Holy Spirit, why not? If he's a true believer. Muhammad is mentioned in the Bible. Well, those arguments Muslims, they come with, it's very funny, right? But just to show you, Christians, when they, when they try to refute the Muslims, they, they, uh, they use their logic. I don't do that. I don't use my logic. I lose their logic. As an example, they show you a verse claiming that Muhammad is in the Old Testament. Correct? Okay. That's mean the Quran is wrong. The Quran says in chapter 61, verse number 6, that Jesus, the Messiah, which the Islam called him Isa, which we do not know who is Isa, and obviously the son of Maryam, the sister of Aaron, which make Isa, or Aka, supposedly Jesus, is the nephew of Aaron, which is stupid of Muhammad to say. However, the verse here is saying that Isa, he said, that there is a messenger will come after me. His name is Ahmed. The Muslim here translate the name. You should not translate the name. You should put it as it is. But anyway, praised one. Okay, who is the one who mentioned that name? Isa. So why you are quoting me for the Old Testament? You know what I mean? If you want to quote for me, you have to quote for me where Isa said there is a prophet, his name is Ahmad. Then they quote for you the paraclete. What? The paraclete is Ahmad? Is it? And paraclete is a spirit. Is Muhammad is a spirit? So it's like, you know, it's like a bunch of kids, you know, copy paste from each other. They don't know what they are talking about. All those arguments can be destroyed in two seconds. You know? We have people here celebrating the 4th of July from the 2nd of July, from the 1st of July. By the way, I don't like anyone to play with firework. And I will tell you why. New Year come, many occasion, new country, local occasion, I mean, uh, occasion. You see, if you have extra money, go and give it to somebody poor. There's women, they have no husbands. There's women, they are old. Men, they are old. They cannot walk. You have money, you want to burn it? Instead of putting in little things, stupid thing, go in the sky, burn for a second, give it to a poor person. He can buy some bread, 
he can buy maybe something he need a clothing a medicine I mean it was very sad for me when I was in the Philippines and I saw how in the new year Filipinos spending hundreds of millions of dollars literally but this is a poor country how you are poor and then you spend all this money for what all this money is gone in five minutes you can build schools you can build hospitals you can fix your water problems your flood problems your roof problems so please be smart for me a person who do this with my respect to everybody is like a fool he's a fool you know one day uh, you know for me i like to go i used to go a lot like hiking and camping etc so once i have a friend and he have with him cigarettes i i, I hate smoking i never smoke all my life and you know if you want to if you want to sit next to me don't smoke anyway so you have his cigarette we have fire then i took his cigarette box and i throw it in the fryer he got upset what you did you know why you said this is the only box i have we will stay here for the coming two days what happened why are you upset so would you, you throw it in the fire I said, aren't you bringing it here to burn it i just burn it for you i mean how foolish a human being is he buy something to kill him he buy something spend money cost him a lot of money to kill him to kill himself to kill his wife to kill his children you smoke in your house all the house is smoking how foolish i know many of you will be upset from me for saying that but this is what this is the truth my friend i don't i am not here to say what you like to hear i am here to say the truth why you want to do that yourself if you calculate how much money you spend for a smoke and the fact no you are not smoking they are smoking you they are smoking your blood those who they are saying you tobacco they are billionaires and i assure you they don't smoke their own product yesterday the italian police they uh, 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 they found more than uh, what what is equal of drugs of one billion euro how much one billion euro made by whom sent by whom by isis sent to where to europe one billion euro that is the devil my friend isis sending drugs to europe look how pro how, how smart they are as evil from one hand they destroy the nation or the nations of European people they destroy their youth they destroy their health they kill them in the other hand they take their money you can go right now and search the news one billion and the funny Trump he keeps saying to us every day that there is no ISIS no more but they are saying clearly that those are drugs coming from ISIS in Syria specifically which means they have manufacturers they have system to grow to make to 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 uh, to import I mean how all this work how this is always working you can imagine how powerful this mafia is see I mean look at this man look at this Look how big what they found. All of this. One billion euro. So this is the value of the drugs. Read. It says one billion worth of drugs believed to be produced by the Islamic State ISIS in Syria. The fruit of Allah. So they send drugs to kill your children. In the same time, they will take your money. See how the devil work?
but it's not the fault of ISIS. It is the fault of corrupt people. If nobody buy them, ISIS cannot sell them. You know what I mean? If you don't buy drugs, nobody can send you drugs. So we cannot blame ISIS for you being stupid. Do we agree? So if your kids became corrupt, stupidity, sex, drugs, dancing, nightclub, and the best scenario football, which is nothing but the garbage. I mean, like if you go, if you go right now, watch this football thing. It's, it's hilarious, stupid. If you are a person who is a fan of football, I advise you not to be stupid. Because simply, first of all, there's no sport in this. this is, those are professional. Professional. You see, the second sport became a profession, it's not sport no more. And the second, the team, is not from the country no more, it's not a sport no more. Okay, the French team, how many foreigners there is? More than the half. Where is the French team? Where is the German team? Where is Liverpool team? Egyptian, Morocco, Tunisia, Russia. I mean, they bring players from everywhere. Where is the game? So if you are a person who support a sport, that's good. Play the sport, enjoy it. But this, this is not a sport. They are sucking your money. It's all about business. Look at them. Each one of those who they are in sport, they are living like kings. Literally like kings. And the fool you, you have little money you make every month. You take it from your pocket, you go to the stadium, you give it to them. Don't excuse me if I say the fool you. I don't mean you. Unless you do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why are you going to do that? What, what does this game is about? I mean, this is even silly. You know, like when I was like in my 20, this was like 100 years ago. So, oh, this is a wonderful game. I like it. You know, oh, wonderful. But then I noticed this is a, this is a, this is a fraud. This is not even a game. Even sometimes they decide who will lose before they start the game. The same as those fraud who do like fighting in the stage. They tell the guy before he go up, you lose. He win. I mean, it's isn't it obvious it's fake all? 99% of those games are fake. Intelligence is what makes us a human, not the opposite. Not because we are, we are a human, we are respected, no. We are respected for God, he gave us a gift. This is why he leveled us upon others. He called us children of God. Why? Because he have given us a brain. But sadly, we don't want to use the brain. We are people who do what things, what people tell us what to do. You sit in TV, watching TV, suddenly they start talking about food, which is so tasty. And then when you buy it, it's so disgusting. A shampoo will make your hair go so crazy. And when you try it, yes, it go crazy. You, you lose it. So they make you buy things. They make you spend things because you decide to be subdued. The same as Islam. Islam is about you surrender. Don't use your brain. So let us make it simple. The devil, he tried to control you in many ways. It can be Islam. It can be football. It can be gambling. It can be whatever it is to be. As long as he strip you from your right of thinking, and making the right decision. He is a winner. You know what I mean? It's about making you a goat. Someone tell you what to do, what to buy, what not to buy, what to eat, what not to eat. And they create days like the Father Day. What this day is about? Huh, it's just to go and spend some money to buy a gift for your father. And now if you don't buy a gift in that day for your father, that's mean you don't love your father. But who said that? Companies, they said that. They want you to be a fool. The day for the mother, how many billions is going to be spent in that day for what? If you love your mother, you love her every day. The gift you can give to your mother is to be loving to her every day. Not once a year you give her a gift. 
So they create, they fabricate occasions so you can be their goat. You can be their donkey. You work all day and then the money, little money you make, you put it in their pocket willingly thinking that you are the smart person. So now we have the 4th of July. Let us buy firework. You have fire in your head. What firework? Okay, 4th of July, thank God, we are a free nation. Instead of burning it in, in, you know, what about teaching your children about the garbage of the liberals? Antifa and potato and tomato. Those crazy people who want to destroy statues and etc. I mean, madness. Okay, do we have anything? Well, uh, someone saying stop watching TV in any Hollywood movie. You can watch TV. This is not a problem. You see, I can watch TV and so I can know what's happening in TV. So I can teach others about the stupidity of the TV. So it's not right to, 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 to say we don't want to look, so we don't we will not be able to be updated and to know what's happening. It's good to look, but not to be under the TV influence. <clears throat> There's a verse that speak well of Christians in the Quran. No, there's not, not a single verse support the Christian and the Quran. That's not true. Uh, if you read carefully, this is the problem that most of us, when we read, we don't read carefully. We read the outside. This is the verse you are talking about. Mark, our friend uh, MXRK said, let us show you his statement. There are verses that speak well of Christians in the Quran, and they always use those to support their argument. That's absolutely not true. There's not even a single verse in the Quran speaking well of the Christians. And I will give you an example right now as we speak. This verse here as example says, the most people Oh, my screen is not up, sorry. Let me turn the screen on. It's my fault. This is uh, our friend here. He was making the comment. There are verses that speaks well of the Christians and the Quran, and they always used this to support their argument. That's false. Islam is like a Satan have two faces and Satan here like always to appear to you in the face you like so read with me carefully you will find the most hateful people to uh, and host like they have hostility to those who believe which mean the Muslims are the one who they are called Jews okay so what this verse saying this verse saying that the most hateful people to Islam is the Jews and then and the idolaters okay and then you will find the nearest of them in affliction to those who believe to be is the one who called himself Christians. Right? Okay. You will say to me, he says, speaking well about Christianity. That's false. That's absolutely false. The purpose of this verse is to divide and conquer. So don't be the fool. If I want to go and now I want to say, I want to kill you, oh, both of you, Christians and Jews. And now I will make them united against me. That will not work. So I will say, oh, Jews are the minority. Let us start with the minority. The most people who hate you is those who call Jews, and the most people they are close to you, those who they are called Christians. So they're now the Christians, they are relaxed. Oh, Muhammad, he don't mean us. So if he killed the Jews, let us sit and watch. And this is exactly what happened. The Christian did not get involved when he was killing the Jews. He fooled them. He made them relax. But Muhammad is a person who believes Saturday first and second Sunday is next. 
So this is to divide and conquer, not speaking good of you. Right after the same chapter, same chapter, if you go a few verses before, it says, take not the Christian and Jews as a friend. Well, are we talking about the same Quran? We are talking even about the same chapter. Take not Christians and Jews as a friend. So where is the verse speaking well of us? How we are nice to the Muslims and take us not as, a, as, as Jews and as, as a friends and protectors. Do you understand? So they try to fool you by quoting verses which Muhammad the Satan he used to deceive in his war. This is why the Muslims they believe lying to Christians is halal. We are in war with them. So they can say to you, oh, the Prophet, he ordered us to respect you. The Prophet ordered you to love you. Well, where? Show us. And then they quote you some stupid verses. Hmm. Yeah, but you have to be careful. You know, they, they try to trick people. It's about education. At the end of the day, everything is about how educated you are. It's a book, my friend. If you want to respond to a claim, you use the book, you don't use a verse only. You know what I mean? Like when a Muslim, he says, show me where Jesus says, I am God. And then he says to you, he caught for you a verse from the Bible. Jesus saying, worship your God alone. Okay. But it's a book. It's not a verse. We believe in a book. Actually, our book is book of books. And I find actually very funny about Muslims when they say that we memorize the Quran, you don't memorize the Bible. My friend, all your Quran is not even the index of our Bible. All your Quran is not the size of the index. You memorize what? All your Quran. It's a very tiny part. If we compare between the size of the Quran, there's a guy who wrote the Quran, all of it in an egg. All the Quran in an egg. <laughs> you know? And they say to you, we memorize the Quran. No? Same time, they memorize a stupid book. They don't know even what they are memorizing. Do we have any questions or we are done for today? About the Lamri of Muhammad. Yeah, the Quran is a very small book. You see, if, when you read in Arabic, like Arabic text, they make the font big so they can have more pages, but otherwise, the Quran is so tiny, small. Very small book. If we compare between the size of the Quran and the size of the Bible, we'll find that the, the, the Quran is not even like the introduction for the Bible. <clears throat> Anyone have a question? Nobody? All right. Uh, I'm not sure, I don't know, tomorrow, tomorrow, maybe I will go in the morning, tomorrow, we will see, I will let you know. What is the context of Surah Toba 929? That verse is very simple. The Muslims, they were afraid, uh, after Muhammad, he forbid uh, the pagan, the Muslim pagan, like them, they are all of them are pagan anyway, from entering the, the, the Mecca and the Medina. So because of that, they were worried that they will be in property for there's no business no more, no trade, no etc. It's just the Muslims, we don't do anything except war. So Muhammad, he told them, read carefully, oh, you believe, this is verse number 28, the are only are unclean, they are not just filthy. And this is the supremacist teaching of Islam. Islam teaches that Muslims are clean. Anyone not a Muslim is filthy, dirty, najis. 
نجس is like a sewage so let them not to come near the Mecca and Medina and then if you fear poverty Allah will enrich you from his bounty and right away go says go and kill the Christians and take their money or let them pages it so this is the conduct do you see it it was a solution for the pocket of the Muslims from your blood from your mind can you talk more about Muhammad stealing underwear well I mean what do you want to steal when you talk about it or more very simple proving that Muhammad is a thief because the story not only confirmed that Muhammad is a false prophet but because he stole the underwear no I mean for sure a prophet will not do that but because the Quran could not provide us with the one who stole it the Arab Muslims they accuse their prophet that he stole an underwear they accuse him of embezzling so Allah decide to prove this is chapter 3 verse 161 that Muhammad don't do this sign action he is not a thief but Allah failed to tell us who is the one who took the underwear you know what I mean which mean obviously it is Muhammad because if you are accusing my favorite prophet and I am God I know who took it don't Allah know everything You know what I mean? Don't Allah, if he is God, he see everything. Don't he knew who took the underwear? He knew. Okay, why he did not tell us? Or what he did, he says, it's not Muhammad. So obviously it is Muhammad. Because he could not give us the name of the one who took it. If the one is talking is Allah, and Allah is God, as Muslim they claim, well, you should say, okay, go to the house of a Christian prince. You will find the, uh, the, the red underwear because the Christian prince, he liked to collect the prophet Muhammad underwear. And he took it from the auction or he stole it. Then they will come to my house. They open the drawer. Oh, Christian prince, you took the underwear, which the prophet, he used to wear it in bikini. Got busted. But look what Allah, he said, supposedly. It is not Muhammad who did it. That's mean it is him who did it. Because if it's not him, then who? Why Allah don't say who? He's trying to protect the other person? Is he protecting a thief? <laughs> so, you know, like uh, once I was, uh, I was uh, speaking with the Muslim, he said to me, you have a brain of the devil. I can't even talk to you. Wherever I go, you get me busted. But not because you are truthful, but because the devil is giving you a, this different brain. He says, my friend, if the devil can give me such a brain, how come your stupid Allah cannot give you a better brain? He said, see, I just told you. <laughs> you know, he went, look, my brain is powerful because the devil is giving me this brain. Okay. But shouldn't Allah, who is more powerful than the devil, give you better brain? So they cannot refute you. They accuse you that, okay, you beat us because your brain is different. Uh, the, the devil, he gives you his brain. So why Allah don't give you a brain which is better than the brain I have? Aren't you here to defend Allah? And Allah should sponsor you? Is it Allah who says to you that those who do a jihad, I will be with them and I will make them victorious and show us the victory? Yeah, always when you want to speak to them, use their stupid logic. The most thing the Muslims they hate is the, using their logic. You know what I mean? Allah do not know how Muhammad don't want to, to read. No, Muhammad, you see, uh, <sighs> Muhammad is a person who lived between the Jews. And Muhammad the fool, he hear the stories of the Jews, which is coming from some from the Old Testament, some from the 
uh, from the Talmud, uh, you know, like a collection of heritage. And Muhammad, he adopt immediately. Whatever the Jews they say, Muhammad, he take it for granted. So, have you ever heard of the Muslim saying to you that it's mentioned in the Old Testament that there is a prophet who cannot read or someone who cannot read? This is about the prophet Muhammad. Eh, Muhammad, he heard about it. But that statement there is about the false teachers. And this has happened exactly when you have a fool copying without understanding. It's about people who worship God by their mouth, but the book for them is sealed. They say we are unlearned, illiterate. So the excuse is, we don't understand it. Muhammad, I think, he was trying to take a cut, like a, a character from the Bible about this person who do not know how to read, and he say, it is me, the one who do not know how to read. It's a sealed for me. But if you go and read the verses, you will see it's about a person or people who they are fake, false, corrupt. You know? Uh, Well, I don't know. It, it changed in word in the translation. What does that mean? I mean yeah. And now they agree. All this time they were reading their own Quran. All right. Did finally Allah swearing by His creation? Will Allah swear by? Uh, first of all, who said that those things are the creation? Allah He swear by the fig. Have you ever heard of a God swear by the fig? Hmm? Have you ever, ever? I mean, I cannot imagine that there is somebody, he is God, and he, he, he swear by the fig and by the olive. Do you see it? by the fig and the olive. This is God. So imagine I claim to be God and then I bring for you a watermelon and I swear, I swear. I swear by what, Christian Prince? By the watermelon. Huh? I swear by the tomato. Yeah. So when you say to me, he swear by the creation, I mean, he goes so silly. Not only he swear by creation, he goes so silly to swear by the fig. What's uh, fig and olive? You go and read the interpretation, they say to you, Allah swearing by the fig, even they are not ashamed of it. By the fig? Why, I was hungry? What? He missed it? He did not eat for long? It's a, you know, it's a stupid book. Actually, you know, one of you sent me uh, a video saying that they found the Mount of Sinai in Saudi Arabia. And, and, you know, sometimes I wonder, like, how people even listen to those things. What is the name of the Mount? Mount of Sinai. So it's going to be in Sinai, so it is in Saudi Arabia. So imagine I say to you, the Mount of Norway, and then you tell me I found it in Mexico. You know what I mean? Do, do you understand what I'm saying? They sent me a video saying that they found the Mount of Sinai in Saudi Arabia. But it's called the Mount of Sinai. But Sinai is not in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Sinai is in Sinai. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, people, they come with a lot of things. I don't know. Like, I, I, find, I find it funny. But nobody want to think for a second. I mean, just people, they copy, paste, and throw. They throw at you stuff, you know. Like, sometimes you feel like when you walk in this earth, you feel like you are you are walking 
and there's people they are throwing bad tomatoes on you and they are asking you is it bad or is it tomato <laughs> uh. Uh, what you can do <clears throat> you know always try to use your brain don't be a person who depend on others to think for you always use your brain I remember like once they have a, in the month of Ramadan like they have like a program if you answer the question they uh, they give you like a, an ounce of gold gift imagine just a question in the street so the TV is going through and asking people a question uh, and then there's a there's a team inside the studio it's like entertainment program in Ramadan so they ask uh, they ask the team an insect and this insect is mentioned in the Quran and produce honey what is the name of the insect the first team they gather their head together and they are like whispering and then time is up they did not know the answer they give the question to the second team the second team the time is up they could not find the answer then they switch the question to the street and then the yeah, I mean an insect mentioned in the Quran and this insect make honey what is the name of the insect it's hard it's very hard maybe cockroach maybe chicken so uh, sometimes a human being can go like out I mean this is like something it's it's hard to believe that yes a human being can be silly and very empty-minded you know another one they ask him like they ask uh, air condition New York uh, what is called in air condition New York name for us the name of the air condition and win an ounce of gold the guy he think he say Mitsubishi uh, okay repeat the question air condition New York name for us the name of the air condition and get an ounce of gold Toshiba first person second person and I'm, I'm dying laughing at you know he just told you the name of the air condition it's called air condition New York. What is the name of the air condition? So what usually happened that people they don't really focus. They are shallow in the way they listen. They are shallow in the way they read. They are shallow about everything. Shallow is like a li lifestyle, you know? I mean the guy he just gave you the name you don't know what the name you know so if you train yourself to be shallow you will be always shallow you will never read you will never see so the Mount of Sinai will be where in Sinai <laughs> and by the way the stupid Quran pronounced Sinai wrong he call it Sinin just to tell you why if you notice with me here Muhammad is swearing by what he said a teen was Zaytun so the last letter is letter N and now he want to say Turu Sina he, instead of saying that he says Sinin which is wrong just to add noon to the end to make it the same as the like the term like the same letter you know the letter N at the end so because those uh, uh, he have to end the, the the statement with the letter so he changed the name of Sinai and he make it Sinin which is stupid Actually, even Arabic is very, very damaged Arabic. What teen was Zaytun, what was I mean, what is that? Anyone who speaks Arabic will die laughing. Uh, anyway, so uh, I think we have uh, enough for today. I hope you guys you have a good time but look like this this time uh, in the day is not too much attractive to many we have only 500 600 people today <clears throat> uh, 
Um, I'm not sure I will, if I will be tomorrow in the morning there, but you will be updated. Subscribe to our page in Patreon, in Facebook, and Minds. All the pages we use to update people about our broadcast. And feel free to invite your friends. And uh, I pray that our time was not a waste. We learn something, we discuss something useful. And whatever we learn, we will not keep it to ourselves, we will give it to others. For a human being who learn and keep it to himself is very selfish, is no Christian anyway. And it's against the value of a human being. You know, for you, you earn a lot of knowledge from your ancestors. Today we have computer, but the computer was not born in one day. There's a lot of people who make need a lot of things through thousands of years until we arrive here and this is why a human being is different so what we have today is not a made of one man is made of millions today when anything you have around you it's not a product of one person it's a product of this person and all the people who before him work from the time of adam to make our life easier and different. Not like time, not long time ago, you know, people they used to wash their clothes by hands. And that really is very tough, very hard, especially for those who have a big family. Uh, and then human beings start thinking about how to ease. So the ease we have today, we should appreciate, but we should remember it's not only an ease for us, and we stop there. We have to provide something to ease for the one who will come after us, our children. So don't be selfish. So whatever you learn here, you should share with your family, your friends, so you will ease life on them and they will not be fooled, they will not be trapped, they will not be victims. If you think you are protected, doesn't mean that your child is protected. For you did not inform him, you did not teach him. Don't hide the truth sometimes the truth is ugly you hide it from your children they might be a victim tomorrow teach them about that drugs is wrong sex before marriage teach them about what's right what's wrong teach them about god teach them about a false ideology around us dangerous ones so if you don't do that you are exposing your family your children to the worse it's like we don't have immunity the immune system we have is our knowledge, not only the white cells in our blood. Corona is strong because we have little knowledge about it. Corona is so weak when we have knowledge about it. So in order to fight a disease, you need to study it. And here we are fighting a disease is called Islam. So if you don't study it, and if you don't share the knowledge you learned with your children, you are committing a crime against them. I remember a guy in Australia, his son is 15, 16 years old. Suddenly he disappeared and after a year he saw him in the TV in Syria committing suicide bombing. The poor kid, 15, 16 years old, he is not a Muslim. He met a bunch of Muslims, they converted him to Islam and then they smuggled him all the way to Syria to join ISIS and they fool him to commit suicide bombing. If those families, they did learn about Islam and they taught their children, their son by now should be a growing man. He will be 20, 